Welcome to the Lab Report. I'm your host, Paul Krampitz. On a previous edition, we talked about running drinking waters and wastewaters using ICP technology, or inductively coupled plasma spectrometry. Today, we're gonna to switch gears a little bit, still talk about EPA methodologies, but today we're going to talk about running solid wastes and sediments using ICPMS spectroscopy, or inductively coupled mass spectrometry. We're specifically analyzing samples according to EPA methodology 6020B, which is a part of SW846, or Solid Waste 846, which is a test method for evaluating solid wastes. The first thing you have to do is to take your wastes or sediments and actually put them into solution or digest them. Let's talk a little bit more about the digestions you have to do for SW846. We're gonna demonstrate very quickly method 3005A uh, for the digestion, which is basically a hot plate digestion. So you have your handy dandy hot plate, you turn it on to 100 degrees or so, actually a little bit less than that. You don't want it boiling, you want it near boiling, but not boiling. Then you add a series of acids to the solution. You add five mils of nitric, two mils of concentrated HCl, and then you reduce its volume, once again not boiling, but reduce the volume down to approximately 20 mils. Cool the solution, bring it back up to 100 mils, and you're ready to run. After the sample has gone into the plasma, which sits right here, everything's ionized, or the elements of interest are ionized. And those ions then pass through the cones. Uh, the next scene uses a series of three cones, a sampler, a skimmer, and a hyperskimmer cone to focus the ions into a beam. Those ions then flow into what we call a quadrupole ion deflector, which through voltages bends the ions or the positively charged ions 90 degrees into the cell and quadrupole while the neutrals and dirts and unwanted species basically go out of the system into the oil. This is your collision cell or your dynamic reaction cell or what we call our universal cell which can do all three modes together either standard, collision or full reaction mode with ammonia as a reaction gas. Once ions pass through the reaction cell, it then goes into the analyzing quadrupole to be read by a discrete dyno detector or a dual stage detector down here at the end. One of the first issues you have to be concerned about for running wastes and sediments and, and sludges is a variety of low and high concentrations within the same samples. You may be running PPT levels for some and high PPM levels for others. So because of that, many times you have to use several dilutions for the same sample. Environmental laboratories don't like to rerun samples, right, because it costs time and money. So the next scene has the ability to do both those PPT levels and the very high PPM levels in the same run. We're able to do this because um, our system uses a quadrupole which can be tuned to do very low levels or detuned or desensitized to do very high, higher levels, and we can desensitize those ions on purpose. So for example, in this run, we may want to do trace arsenic and trace silver or selenium. And then we might want to do high levels of calcium, magnesium, iron, uh, uh, the minerals. And what we can do is we can put a small setting and destabilize the quadrupole just for those four or five, and, and that will give you linearities up to even 500 ppm for some of those metals. That way you won't have to dilute. So that's one of the advantages of, of the Nexian. Um, so one of the issues is that high and low concentration issue. The second issue are interferences. So if a molecular ion, let's say, has the same mass as our analyte, the mass spec cannot tell the difference between the two, it's just looking for a mass. And we're going to get a false positive or false high. However, for many of these, we can use a correction mode or a collision mode, some folks will call it kinetic energy discrimination, to eliminate these interferences. 
Now some elements don't need any correction at all because they don't have any interferences. So what we'll do in this application note to follow is that we'll run these uh, ions in standard mode. Now going back, some elements as we talked about need correction. Now a very common one is argon chloride. Argon is mass 40, chloride is mass 35. You add them up and you get uh, 75, I think. Um, arsenic, we talked earlier, is monoisotopic at mass 75. You're going to have an interference. So let's use a collision mode to take care of the interferences. Basically, the collision cell that we use is a small quadrupole, four rods enclosed in a small container, if you will, and we fill that with a collision gas, in this case, helium. Now the analyte ions, let's say this is arsenic, and let's say this is argon chloride. So the analyte is much smaller than your interferences, right? So picture this, if both of these are going into a cell that's filled with uh, other atoms in there, like helium, if they're, flow if they're going through here, if this collides with the helium, it's smaller, so it'll have a few collisions, and it will lose a little bit of energy, but it'll still make it into the quadrupole to be analyzed. However, if you have a very large interference here, this is going to have multiple collisions with the helium, and every time, it's going to lose more and more and more energy, kinetic energy, and won't have enough kinetic energy to actually make it into the quadrupole. So that's simple, it's all based on size, but that's really how a collision cell works. It's also important to note that the Nexian itself requires very little maintenance. When you run waters in high total dissolved solids or TDS solutions, your cones, your optics, your cell, your quadrupole can require cleaning or replacement. This unit was designed so that past the interface or the cones, you should have no maintenance at all. And in the comments section below this video, you'll find a link to the full application note we're talking about with 6020B under SW846. This app note will give you all of the information you need, as well as a standard operating procedure to meet the requirements of US EPA method 6020B using the Nexian, Nexian 350. It uses both standard mode and collision mode within the same run. So we've talked about ICPMS. We've talked about standard and collision modes, and we've talked about how you can even run these modes automatically together within the same analytical run. Take a look at the link, like we said, if you want a deeper knowledge of what we're talking about here. But this has been Paul Krampus from the Lab Report. Remember, you learn something today, you'll be smarter tomorrow. See you next week for another edition of the Lab Report. Thank you.